I have some news here for Joe Biden, which is uh, somewhat devastating, if I don't say so myself. So Carl Bezier tweeted this. Um, New Emerson poll finds that a 51% majority of Sanders supporters are likely to consider voting third party or independent. So you could see there, um, this is the specific breakdown. It says, how likely are Sanders supporters to consider backing an independent or third party candidate? Uh, This is from April 28th. You have very likely 21.9%, somewhat likely 29.1%. And then you have somewhat unlikely 11.5, very unlikely 14, no chance 23.6. It's kind of amazing that only 23%, 23.6% say there's no chance of them backing a third party or independent candidate. So this is noteworthy, particularly because these numbers are honestly the, the strongest I've ever seen. So... I was under the impression it was like 12, 15% or something of Bernie supporters who are either going to not vote or vote third party. Um, But no, we're talking about a 51% majority of Bernie supporters that are likely to consider voting third party or independent. Guys, Joe Biden has a little bit of a crisis on his hands right now. Now, I, I don't want you to get it twisted. He won the primary without the young. I mean, it's just, it's true. That's what happened. Um, And it's possible that he puts together a coalition of the suburban professional class people, the anti-Trump suburban professional class people, that's enough to win the election. That's possible. But, but, and there's a very important but, this is not the coalition that won the last time for the Democrats. The Obama coalition in 2008 and 2012, one of the biggest parts of the coalition was young people. And so the general consensus of the experts is any, you know, generic Democrat needs a very high turnout among young people in order to win. And they need a giant, you know, chunk of those young people, a large percentage of those young people to be for them. So what's happening here, what we're witnessing here is that With Bernie, his coalition was so, it was young, very young, overwhelming, like 80% of the young people, 70%, depending on what age you look at and go underneath. But if you're talking 51% of them might vote third party or independent, Joe needs to be doing everything in his power to get these people on his side. Instead, what he's doing is, you know, the classic Joe Biden move. He's out there giving interviews now saying, oh, I haven't even ruled out Republicans for my administration. I'll have a bipartisan administration. He's going to pick, you know, I think he's probably going to pick Amy Klobuchar or Gretchen Whitmer for his VP. So that, again, would kind of be a giant middle finger to the left. In a world that made sense, what would happen is Joe Biden would go, I need to pick a VP who's going to get the young on my side. And, you know, who better for that than the person who got all the young votes? Bernie Sanders. I've told you guys what it would take to get me to support Joe Biden. I would need to be convinced he would fight for at least one or two of my top five policies. Medicare for all, free college, living wage, and the war's UBI. Um, I don't think he's going to fight for any of those. I haven't been convinced of it. On paper, he says he support a living wage. I don't believe him, plain and simple. Um, So, since he's not going to fight for any of the things that are my priorities, I made an exception. I said, okay, if you pick Nina or Bernie for VP, I'll vote for you. Looks like he's not going to do that either. And finally, I said, all right, well, Bernie could have gotten me to support Biden if he gave him a list of 10 executive orders and said, hey, listen, man, in order to get my support, in order to have me campaign for you, that you need to do these in the first 100 days. Because then we'd have tangibles. It would be, not only is he going to do these things, he's going to do them in the first 100 days in here. I have the sheet of paper. He says he's going to legalize marijuana. He says he's going to do whatever, fill in the blank. You could have picked 10 amazing executive orders that Biden has the ability to do. But none of those things happened. None of my policies being supported. None of the executive orders proposed by Bernie. No hard lines drawn by Bernie. And Bernie and Nina aren't VP. And are almost certainly 99% not going to be VP. 
So here we are. I'm put in a situation where I'm just totally turned off by a guy who's a neoliberal corporatist who's not going to do anything that I want him to do, who I don't agree with. You know, people come after me for not vo voting for Biden. I don't agree with him. What do you want me to tell you? I don't agree with him. So you can't, how dare you not vote for the person that you don't agree with? Why would I vote for a person I don't agree with? That makes no sense. I wouldn't do that. So, in other words, for me, the choice is either not voting or voting third party. That's what it is. So, you know, but I thought I was in a smaller group of people. Apparently, it's likely that 51% majority of Bernie supporters are going to vote third party or independent. Now, if Biden loses, they immediately will turn around and blame us. But I told you guys this before, and I mean it. You don't have to run away from that. You don't have to run away from that. In other words, you say to them, when they blame you, if Trump wins when if Trump wins re-election, which he might, uh, by the way, Biden can win, though. Who knows? I don't know yet. But they'll say, well, you're the problem. You're the reason that Biden lost. How dare you? And your response, honestly, should be, that's right. I'll take it. I didn't vote for Biden. Well, I guess next time, next time you run a Democratic candidate, you better look to us and ask us what we need to get on board. Because if if you're if you're blaming us for Trump winning, you're admitting I need you in order to win. I need you for the coalition. And if you're admitting that you need us, well, I guess the logical thing to do is to try to get us. So here, I'll tell you what my what the things are that I need in order to support your candidate. So in other words, don't you don't have to run away from it, guys. When they accuse you of oh, you're the reason Trump won, be like, yeah. So I guess you gotta listen to me now, huh? Because that makes sense. So you know, there's a deeper conversation to be had as to whether or not we're actually to blame. I'm saying for strategic reasons, you say, sure, blame me, but now you got to listen to me. Because in reality, the people who are really to blame for a Trump win would be the people who voted for Trump. <laughs> Literally, like they cast a vote for the dude. So they're the ones who are responsible for it by definition. But hey, if, if you just take the blame anyway, so that and then tell them you got to listen to me now because you're admitting it's my fault. OK, fine. Listen to me then. So, um. That's what I would do, but this number is really high, guys. It is. It's amazingly high, and I'm stunned by how high that number is. And so the Libertarian uh, Party is in an interesting position. Justin Amash might end up being their candidate. You know, he'll get... Uh, I'll be very curious to see what percentage of the vote he gets. Um, and then also whoever the Green Party candidate ends up being. I know Howie Hawkins wants to be the candidate. I don't think he is yet, but I also know now that Jesse Ventura is you know, look, looking like he wants to be the Green Party candidate as well. And so he might run as well. So naturally, you got a bunch of people out there blaming already Justin Amash, you know, Jesse Ventura, Howie Hawkins. You could already see the Jill Steinification <laughs> argument. And listen, I mean, it, it never made sense in the first place, man. It really didn't because they asked Jill Stein supporters in 2016 Hey, if you couldn't vote for Jill Stein, if she wasn't in the race, who would you vote for? It was a very low number that said Hillary. It was like 15% or so. So if you want to say, take that 15% of Stein supporters and add it to Hillary's total in a hypothetical scenario, you could do that. But that's still not enough for Hillary to win. Because a lot of Jill Stein supporters said, I would have just stayed home if I wasn't going to vote for Hillary. Uh, and then some even said I'd vote for Trump if, if Jill Stein wasn't in. So, you know, that's how you'd have to look at it. But Again, I'm just floored by this number being so high. And what it shows is, and I mean this earnestly, I'm not trying to do like a gotcha or anything here for Joe Biden, but like if his campaign really wants to win, they might have to make overtures now to young people, you know, in a way that I didn't think maybe they had to do before. Again, it's possible he wins with just that older coalition, but usually the Democrat needs the young. And if these numbers are true then Joe, you got to do something now. Like you would have to pick like Bernie or Nina for VP. You would have to, you know, if Joe Biden came out and made this big stink about, no, I'm literally, I'll do what Bernie said, where he said he'd legalize marijuana. Bernie said on day one, but Biden could say, I'll legalize it in the first hundred days through executive order. And I have the ability to do that. If he were to do that, that would go a long way. I think that would get a lot more people on his side. Um, but again, from what I see from the campaign, they're not, really doing anything that's substantive for these 51%, which are mostly young people. And, you know, Bernie, doesn't matter how much he shames them and insults them and tries, tries to get them to fall in line, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. 
So many people who are hardcore Bernie supporters are just like, sorry, man, I don't agree with you. What do you want me to tell you? Keep telling me to back Biden. Give me a reason, man. Give me something really tangible. And they don't. It's just, oh, Trump is bad. Wow, thank you for that high-minded argument. The same argument that everybody was admitting early on. That's not enough. It's not enough to just say, I'm not Trump. But that's what they're going with. And that works with the older voters, but it's not working with the younger voters. So anyway, Biden has a young person crisis on his hands. 51% majority of Bernie supporters are likely to consider voting third party or independent. So listen, Justin Amash, maybe Jesse Ventura or Howie Hawkins. I mean, this is open season. You could actually have an election where they hit that, what's the threshold? I think 5% threshold, which gets them matching funds for the party, which means it's better for the future for the Green Party, Libertarian Party, whoever it might be. Um, so that's, that's what we're looking at now. And um, I'm stunned by how high that number is. Honestly, my guess is when it comes to election day, and we get the real number, it's going to be like 15%, 12 to 15%, I think, of Bernie voters who then either voted for third party or, or didn't vote. Just 15, 12 to 15% that didn't back Biden is my guess. I think that this is too high. And it's a poll that was done, you know, pretty soon after Bernie dropped out in April. So, you know, maybe the wounds are still there and, you know, people are more likely to say, yeah, I might vote for somebody else. But my guess is when we get closer to the election, more of them will fall in line than that 51%. So anyway, we'll find out. But still, that number is stunningly high.